I'm Brian May in our Cal OES studio. We've still been getting a lot of questions from you about the right of entry forms that need to be signed before the state can come on and remove debris from your property that's been affected by the recent wildfires. A lot of questions still concern who you talk to if you're not sure what these right of entry forms are, where you go to get them, and why is there now a deadline in order for you to sign them? Well, this morning I had a chance to talk to Mark Gillarducci, the director of Cal OES, and he has some very clear and precise answers about the ROE process, how it works, who you talk to if you have questions about them, and who you absolutely should talk to before you sign these forms. Very clear answers that will help a lot of you with your questions. Here's our interview with Mark Gillarducci. Mark, first of all, thanks for joining us. You've been at this a long time. Describe to me now where we are in this very long recovery process. Yeah, good morning. Um, <clears throat> so uh, the big focus has been, of course, uh, uh, shortly after the, the fires were contained was, was um, to, get, to get a good handle on not just um, uh, the, the number of people that were impacted, but really uh, what their needs were going to be. Uh, so we've actually approached this in a few phases. Uh, the first phase, of course, was trying to get people into immediate shelters and then ultimately into some temporary rentals and or other kinds of uh, of uh, maybe mobile homes or mobile shelters, uh, uh, and that's been been moving forward. The other the other phase was, of course, uh, to start to get the community cleaned up, and that was really to get this debris operation, debris removal operation started. Um, that that's been underway for some time now. Uh, last few weeks, uh, it starts off with going out and and removing all the household hazardous waste. We're talking hazardous materials, uh, propane, uh, uh, pesticides, paints, other chemicals. Uh, and that's been a concerted effort and a, and a partnership effort between um, the Department of Toxic Subjects Control, which is a state agency, and the U.S. Uh, Environmental Protection Agency. Uh, and we've split the, the counties that have been impacted uh, up uh, for the various agencies to go in and and do that and that that's really the first phase and that's been going very very well we've actually are ahead of schedule with regards to cleaning up the household hazardous waste um, and that's really key because once you get that household hazardous waste cleaned up it clears the way for uh, the debris removal teams to come in and remove all of that fire debris uh, with the uh, intent to get the lot uh, cleaned and and and, and cleared uh, and hazard free uh, so that it can be ready to uh, build on. And, um, and of course, the, to get that process going, um, uh, there's a requirement that each homeowner uh, site sign a right of entry agreement that allows uh, the government to go in and uh, begin to remove that debris from their respective property. And those, those right of entry forms, what we call ROEs, um, are, are very critical. And what we did is we, we, we set the, the date of, of November the 13th as the date um, uh, to, to really get those ROEs in. Um, and, and that's an important date because, uh, and that's an important action because it really does focus everyone uh, in being able to um, uh, get those signed uh, and, and allows us to get that debris operation uh, in a comprehensive way uh, moving forward. It's really important that um, the, the sooner we can get the, the, the debris cleared from these uh, lots, the faster we can begin the recovery process within the community. People can feel like they're beginning the recovery process. There is action taking place. We are moving forward. And we are very cognizant that we are entering into winter. Yeah. Um, this is going to be a factor. Uh, so we, we're trying to move with, as expeditiously as possible uh, to get this program started and get as many uh, of these lots cleared. And of course, we have set a metric uh, uh, with the debris uh, contract teams uh, to be able to get these lots cleared by early 2018. And it's a combination effort between uh, a state agency, Cal Recycle, part of the California Environmental Protection Agency, and uh, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Uh, which we have we have tasked them uh, through our partners at the Federal Emergency Management Agency. Hundreds have signed the ROE, the right of entry forms. For those that are still debating, should I sign this form or try and get my lot cleaned up on my own? Can you talk to that and, and why the ROEs are important? 
Yeah, I mean, you know, look, uh, the first line of defense in, in any, in a, that anybody should do is once you have a, a case like this is, you know, you need to call your insurance company and you need to make contact with your insurance adjuster and, and have them uh, uh, let you know what your insurance covers. In some cases, uh, people have insurance, uh, have a, in their policy a, a debris removal uh, portion that will allow for um, them to hire a private contractor to come in and, and remove the debris from their property uh, and their insurance will cover the cost. We have no problem with that and that is everyone's right to do that and we encourage you to do that as soon as possible. Uh, we know that there are a lot of insured um, uh, homeowners uh, in the fire area, but um, in, in many cases we find that uh, people are either uninsured, underinsured, I should say, or uh, they don't include a debris policy um, uh, a debris portion of their policy. Or the third option is that the debris portion of their policy is, um, is very low and uh, the, 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 it would exceed, uh, the cost to clean up would exceed. So um, what, what, what your first line of, of, uh, of action should be is to check with your insurance company. Um, uh, if you don't have insurance or you're underinsured um, uh, or you choose to uh, go to uh, the, the state program, this is at no charge to you, the homeowner, um, and it allows uh, we, us to come in and we will do all of this uh, debris uh, removal operation. It, it's done in a comprehensive way. We make sure that your lot is certified clean and safe uh, by, by, uh, by state uh, environmental protection standards. And um, uh, it is, it, you know, it's, it's one of these situations where um, you, if you lost your home, you're focusing on rebuilding your uh, life, your, your records, um, trying to work through the, the impacts of this, um, allowing us to come in and, and clean that debris in one fell swoop. Uh, it's, it's really better for you and it's better for um, the community at large uh, in that it, um, it, it is really a, a, the more, most rapid way of doing it. And if you do have a little insurance, uh, if you have insurance uh, proceeds that are directly attributed to debris, uh, the state does work with your insurance company to recoup those specific costs uh, for the debris uh, to help offset the cost. So even if you have insurance and you have, uh, have a debris uh, piece of that policy, um, uh, the state can still come in uh, after you sign your right of entry form we can still come in and, and do that work and then we will work with your insurance company to recoup just the portion that are associated with debris. You, you mentioned encouraging people to talk to their insurance agent. People whose houses have burned during these fires have a lot of questions. So uh, aside from talking to insurance agents, I know you've set up centers around the infected areas or impacted areas for people who have questions to go to these local assistance centers. Can you talk about just getting out and asking questions? Yeah, that's really important. There's several things, a, a way we're trying to get the message out to people. The first is, is that there, there is uh, and there has been uh, since shortly after the fire, uh, local assistance centers set up in your community. These are centers that include local, state, and federal, maybe some non-governmental organizations uh, that allow you to go in and sit with those various uh, state, local, and federal agencies uh, to talk about all of the various aspects that are required uh, that you, you know, I mean, who knows really what to do if you lose your home in a catastrophic way. These folks are there to sit and work and sit with you and, and walk you through the process. The other important thing is, is that this is a, a major disaster declaration uh, by the president. We, we encourage you to register with FEMA. Even if you're insured, uh, please register with FEMA and um, uh, get into the process. Uh, you may receive a letter that says that you're ineligible, um, but uh, if you look below the ineligible portion, there are a number of bullet points uh, that, that you're gonna wanna come back to FEMA. The average is three or four times when you're working with FEMA uh, to be able to work through all these things because once you determine what your insurance covers and doesn't cover, um, uh, FEMA, again, can come in and assist you in some way. So um, uh, it's important that you, you go to the local assistance center and you, you register with FEMA and you sit with all of the different state and, and local agencies that can help you work through it. There's also agencies that are there that will immediately rebuild your records, provide a new license, give you new uh, um, uh, auto registration. Uh, there's uh, people from the Franchise Tax Board and other IRS to be able to deal with your, your lost records. 
Um, the other the other thing is if a, once the local assistance centers close, uh, FEMA continues on with these these assistance centers that will be in the community for the long term. They're called disaster recovery centers, and they're being stood up um, throughout all of the communities that have been impacted by the fire now, uh, so that those long term centers will be a one stop shop for you to go in and sit with with FEMA and the other state agencies and, and, and talk about what your needs are. Mark, I know you've been out in the communities almost nonstop since the fires began. You've met with state, local, federal officials. You've been at community meetings all the time. What are you hearing from people and, and how are you answering those questions? Well, you know, I mean, rightfully so, you know, people are, um, this is a traumatic event. Um, it's hard, uh, you know, I had family that was evacuated and, and impacted by this disaster. Um, this is, this is, you know, beyond professional, it's personal. Um, we have a number of people that are here in the state operations center or have responded to the field. It's many, some of our employees have been impacted and lost their homes. Um, we're all in this together. And, uh, and so we, we hear uh, the concerns. We have really, and we will continue to lean as forward as possible, attending town hall meetings, providing uh, external information um, uh, clarifying any questions that people may have uh, uh, until people don't have any more questions. And that is that uh, through the town hall meetings and through the media uh, outlets, we're trying to get the messages out. Um, but, it, but, you know, uh, and, and even we're even working with our partners at FEMA uh, to have teams go out and meet with people uh, where they congregate, shopping centers, churches, uh, other places, uh, schools, to be able to share information and, and technical data uh, so that they're as informed as possible. Um, yeah, information is key here, and we want to make people as uh, informed and, and as empowered as possible to make the right decisions as they move forward. One of the messages that is becoming clear after these fires have now been contained is that the recovery process is moving quicker than it has in many previous natural disasters. Talk about why the speed of this this time. Well, I, I think that you've got, um, you know, uh, we have great, great partners with, at FEMA, uh, FEMA Region 9. Uh, uh, the administrator and I go back many years. Uh, we've managed many disasters. Uh, you know, we, you know, we have, we have, we deal with a lot of disasters in California, unfortunately, uh, kind of hones our skills a little bit. And I think that in, we know that uh, uh, staying out in front of an evolving crisis like this is really critical. Um, we don't want to be slow to what the needs are. Uh, so we anticipate uh, the needs. Um, we have great partners at the local level, uh, the local community, your local elected leaders, uh, your professional staff your state elected leaders uh, and their professional staffs are all working overtime, our federal counterparts and the federal elected leaders. Uh, and then, and then, the, and then the, the agencies, uh, you know, FEMA has over 20, 22 federal agencies engaged in this. We have the entire state family. Uh, this has all been managed by a unified coordination group of the governor's cabinet, uh, all coming together uh, in a one team, one fight effort to ensure that objectives are made and met. Uh, so we, we put metrics in place uh, and we are, we, are, we are sticking to those metrics uh, that are measurable uh, each, each and every day uh, to ensure that we can, we can move forward. And, and look, we know winter's coming. Uh, this is the biggest disaster uh, in loss of structures in totality that we have seen um, in, in recent times. And, uh, uh, there's no time to sort of dilly-dally on this. We need to work very decisively uh, and we need to move rapidly to get our community uh, back up. What, what our goal is, is to, is to address the needs of the people that have lost, make sure our local communities rebound uh, and the economy gets back operational and that we rebuild in a positive, safe and secure manner. Those are our goals and uh, working together, we'll, we'll continue to get there. Mark, thanks for the clarity in your answers and your time this morning. Happy to be here. Thank you.